Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is a 30 minute chart of silver we've been watching for a while now. Uh, the primary trend line that we have drawn here is the downtrend line we've uh, been watching very closely and uh, I've drawn it up a little bit here to include this uh, breakout but and this test here so you can see that what used to be resistance at least a resistance line I'll say trend line uh, after this breakout uh, we had the uh, resistance point of 33 we're looking to get through that and then of course around 3450 you can see we just barely ticked above 33 and then we turned around and went down came down and tested the top of this line so the other line I've drawn here is the support line it's down around 3110 so we've got 3310 and 3110 we're in this two dollar band that we're trading in we're looking to see if we actually get a lower price than that 3110 that we already got uh, which would be a very good stacking opportunity all of these are fairly good stacking opportunities we're still delving around the lows so uh, as I pointed out the coin that I picked up recently was the 2012 half ounce dragon that ran out they actually got more in at Atmex they've also got more in at Gainesville and uh, but uh, even better deal someone had pointed out is they have them now over at Provident I just did a, a volume check and I got uh, 800 to fail and 700 to succeed on the cart so they have 700 or more if you purchase 100 or more you can get it for 2106 which is I think mine I got mine at 2272 so that's a uh, a discount of about a buck sixty-five over what I got, uh, and that's just, in my opinion, this is just a, a guess on my part as far as this being a numismatic play going forward. I may end up being wrong because uh, there may not be the limitation on this issue. I think someone said that it was three hundred thousand for the one ounce and six hundred thousand for the half, but don't quote me on that. So. A very good price, uh, better than we've seen, and, or you may want to uh, hold off and see if we get lower prices on this. The longer term view, you can see that we're just starting to round up on the MACD for silver. So maybe we'll get a rally from here. We're still at the negative. As far as the weekly goes on silver, we're still... Uh, below the zero line and still trying to get up towards that zero line to uh, get some type of rally or long-term rise uh, as we had in 2008 so we're still waiting for that to uh, form and that brings us to the question of the day from the forum and that's a question about a head and shoulders pattern uh, brother John I'm hearing uh, reading seeing a lot of chatter around the web about a massive reverse head and shoulders formation in silver and gold charts can you explain just exactly what it is these people are talking about thank you well uh, a head and shoulders pattern we'll go over to gold uh, to look at that but a head and shoulders pattern is basically a pattern where you get uh, a right shoulder a head a left shoulder and then and then you get a plunge so you really don't see that if we went over to let's look at the oil chart that's one that really declined so if you were talking about a head and shoulders pattern in in uh, oil here uh, you could say that uh, something like this you've got a shoulder here you've got this head you got a shoulder here and then you get a massive decline so that's the type of thing they're talking about I don't really put a lot of uh, stock in that but if we went over to the silver chart uh, we're talking about a reverse head and shoulders pattern so uh, they may be referring to just a normal head and shoulders pattern that uh, has a head and two shoulders and goes up or they may actually be talking about a reversed head here and that's 
what this seems to look like because the shoulders are down here and the head is there so at least on silver or they may just be talking about um, this larger uh, picture here the gold if we look at the gold we really don't see anything like that uh, maybe people consider this to be a shoulder this to be a head and then another shoulder forming here and then we'll get an explosion to the upside I really don't uh, attach a lot of importance to those types of formations uh, a formation that I consider much more significant is this type of uh, cup and saucer formation where you get uh, this type of well it's a uh, it can be called a cup or it can be called cup and saucer normally the cup and saucer is referring to the fact it has a handle on the cup and then uh, what's below it so but uh, this type of formation here uh, you can see we have repeats of this formation and it's a fairly common formation so uh, this type of situation I have found has been the most bullish for breakouts and we may be forming something like that here over the longer view something like this so again I don't attach a lot of importance to those types of formations so let's get over to the main story of the night it's gonna be uh, Arnold uh, Facchetti and uh, or Facchetti however it's, his name is pronounced but uh, before I go there and, and read the part of the article I wanted to read I wanted to take a uh, take a look at Gresham's law and uh, review this just a little bit. Uh, most of you are familiar with Gresham's Law. It, uh, it's fairly commonly stated that uh, bad money drives out good. That's the basic statement of the law. But let's read it and uh, I'll try to relate it to what we're going to go into. Gresham's law is an economic principle. Now that's kind of interesting that they describe it as an economic principle. It's actually not an economic principle. It's a law, just as it says. Gresham's law is an economic principle that states when a government compulsor compulsorily overvalues one type of money and undervalues another, the undervalued money will leave the country or disappear from circulation into hordes while the overvalued money will flood into circulation. Now, it goes further and we can examine it further, but I just wanted to examine the logic behind this. Now, for this principle, as they state, to be a law, and I, I do consider it to be a law, for you to have a law of markets, what you're really saying is that you have a law of human behavior, or you have a law based on human nature. So we can state it in another way. It is a law of human nature that people are always going to try to protect their wealth from being stolen by others whether that's through inflation, uh, whether that's through getting the cheapest prices, that's something that you see every day at the supermarket. Obviously people are always going to try to find the lowest price for the same good that they can possibly find. That's what makes Walmart the huge success that it is and uh, that uh, accounts for many of the things you see in markets. So you can state this another way in that people will always try to protect their wealth from being confiscated by inflation. And that's very important because the idea that there is a law of human behavior and that humans will behave in a given way in a given circumstance means that it, as long as that holds and as long as you don't have countervailing forces, which I would say the countervailing forces would be mind control, brainwashing, dumbing down, and just general stupidity. If, if you don't have those countervailing forces, then you will naturally have certain actions that occur based on that law. So 
I want to take you over to this article by Professor Fichetti, and that was covered on Zero Hedge, and the name of it is The Gold Problem Revisited, and it was just written this March by the professor, and it's a response to the actions of the Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke in going about uh, going to the schools, the grade schools and the high schools and the colleges. And of course, we've heard recently that the Federal Reserve has decided that it needs a propaganda arm to go out and promote its reputation out there in the blogosphere. Uh, so uh, Professor Fichetti talks about some of these ridiculous attempts of the Federal Reserve to uh, do some of these things. So I'm just going to read the last part of it, and that's part four. The futility of the policy of gold valorization. Now, what that means is basically the government trying to set a price that's a non-market price, or the government trying to suppress the price of, of gold, and how that's a futile endeavor. The world has been witnessing the pathetic attempts of governments and central banks to keep the price of gold in check since the 1971 fraudulent default of the U.S. government on its international gold obligations. To be sure, a default is always followed by a depreciation of the dishonored paper, so the futility of the policy of gold valorization has always been a foregone conclusion. But what we have is far more than this self-defeating effort to keep gold out forever from the monetary system. What we have is a veritable brainwashing of the whole world about the role of gold in the economy and blaming gold for results that only keeping gold in the system could have prevented. So there's some very interesting ideas introduced. Now you can see that the professor is hinting at the fact that the only thing that could possibly overcome an economic law, and remember I pointed out with Gresham's law, that economic laws are based upon human behavior. And human behavior does not change because human behavior is based upon human nature. The only way that you have any chance of changing human behavior that is, and make it not in accordance with human nature is through brainwashing. Hence, we have the Federal Reserve's PR arm out there trying to brainwash the public into believing that the Federal Reserve isn't what it is. So, very interesting. Uh, that uh, the professor points this out. It is alleged that gold has disqualified itself from playing the role as the monetary anchor and source of credit in the economy. Gold is fall, far too volatile for that. Remember, we hear the same thing about silver, but even more so. This is puerile because it ignores the fact that the so-called volatility of gold is just the mirror image of the volatility of the irredeemable dollar in which the price of gold is quoted. It's not that gold is volatile, it's that the dollar is rapidly losing value and that causes the gold price to spike. It is also ignored that the debt crisis is a direct consequence of exiling gold from the international monetary system. Gold is the only ultimate extinguisher of debt. Now, I don't agree with that. I believe the silver as well. It cannot be replaced by the dollar or any other irredeemable currency. Under the dollar system, debt simply cannot be extinguished. Total debt can only grow, never shrink. All the bad debt and toxic sludge stays in the system and is merely kicked upstairs into the balance sheet of the U.S. Treasury. There it remains, representing a great threat to the world. Like radioactive material, when its quantity exceeds the threshold, 
a chain reaction starts triggering a nuclear explosion. The world needs gold as a safe way to eliminate bad debt. Through a system of bribes, blackmail, and intimidation research on questions relating to gold has been discouraged to the point that it is practically non-existent. Now this is coming from one of the greatest professors and researchers into the gold standard and the history of gold. The world continues to live in a fool's paradise. It believes the size of government debt does not matter because it can always be rolled over, nor would it cause inflation or deflation because competent and honorable men, that would be what Mr. Bernanke would try to convince you he is, at the helm can safely navigate our monetary ship through the Strait of Scylla and Charybdis. They have a sharp tool, the printing press, and with its judicious application, they can fine-tune the quantity of money in circulation as well as the rate of interest for the benefit of all. But the virtual elimination of research on gold will strike back. These competent and honorable men at the helm are complete ignoramuses when it comes to gold. They have no notion of the erosion of the gold basis and the irresistible march of the gold futures market into the death valley of permanent gold backwardation. When disaster strikes, gold will not be available at any price. What this means is that the world is insidiously slipping into barter. But you cannot feed the world's present population on the basis of a barter economy. Poverty, pestilence, famine threaten society, not to mention the breakdown of law and order. All this and more because government leaders have allowed the suppression not only of the monetary gold itself, but also of the research on monetary gold. Ben Bernanke, the chairman of the Federal Reserve Board, introduced a new phrase into the vocabulary of economics on July 11, 2011 in his testimony at a congressional hearing. The new phrase is tail risk. He defined it as the really, really bad outcomes in the economy as if, they're, as if they were completely out of sight of human control on the pattern of floods, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis. But tail risk, in reality, is the wholly unnecessary risk taken with human lives by a parasitic, contemptuous, conceited, and yes, ignorant ruling class symbolized by Bernanke that has hijacked the Constitution, in particular turning the Constitution's monetary provisions upside down, which define money in terms of gold and silver. They are only interested in their own self-aggrandizement, in perpetuating their power, and in preserving their superstitious faith in irredeemable currency, a monetary system that has failed miserably every time foolish leaders in history have experimented with it. Mises was a great warrior fighting these usurpers and monetary hijackers with the sharpest weapon there is human reason. We must follow his lead even if it sometimes means that we have to add new ideas that go beyond Mises' opus. The day of reckoning for monetary insanity is on hand. The Constitution is there for the protection of all. If we fail to preserve and uphold it and meekly succumb to the monetary hijackers and usurpers' tactics, then we shall have only ourselves to blame for the consequences. March 20th, 2012. So, unbelievable essay by the, the good professor. Uh, brilliant analysis. And back to Gresham's Law. The very important thing to take away from this is that there are economic laws. And laws are things that cannot be violated. When you're talking about laws of physics, you're talking about things that always happen and cannot be violated. When you're talking about laws of economics, you're talking about things that describe human behavior that always happen when people act in their own self-interest. And of course, the only caveat there is that the only way to make it so that people do not act in their self-interest is to brainwash them. And of course, that is the latest effort by the Federal Reserve 
to go out and brainwash the young people to brainwash the public and to convince them that this bankrupt system of fiat currency will succeed when in fact uh, it only takes a certain percentage of the people to not be brainwashed that causes these laws to go into effect so ultimately what we're doing is educating the public about the value of silver and gold I do believe that the attempts by the Western governments uh, to as Professor Fichetti says, the valorization of gold and silver, the attempt to suppress their prices, the attempt to prevent them from influencing uh, the economies and the monetary policies are going to fail. We, we, don't, we don't exist in a vacuum. We live in a government uh, that's one country and there are many other countries in the world and many of the if you've read the recent Jim Willie you know that many of the eastern countries uh, see through this charade and they are stacking physical gold and silver and of course if you stack physical gold and silver you also uh, become a participant in a Gresham's Law type of scenario where their system of fiat currencies will ultimately break down simply because the law of uh, of human nature that people are going to act in their interest and they're going to seek the type of money that preserves that that is a store of wealth and uh, as they do that it's going to cause these economic laws to come into effect which is ultimately going to collapse their make-believe system and they'll have to invent a new one at that point and we'll talk to you next time